up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Firstly, the long anticipated wait now, this, I thought this was going to come you know, later on in January, but it's now starting right now, the possible return of Leo Messi. According to reports, Xavi has requested the board to sign him next summer as a free agent as he feels like he'll be key to bringing Barcelona back on the tip top of the mountain in Europe. Of course, right now, early days, but Xavi has told the board to prepare to make an offer for Messi when he is going to be a free agent. But for right now, in this summer transfer window, the operation for Jules Kunde is very, very advanced. Jordan Romero came out saying it's already a done deal, but now everyone is coming back as well. You're hearing reports coming in from Spain, Mundo Deportivo, Sport, Candacer, on the Theru, people coming in from also the UK as well, Telegraph, CBS Sports. They're all pretty much saying that Barcelona now are leading the race for Jules Kunde and it could be official at any given moment. But lots of Jules Kunde, Xavi also wants Cesar Aspiracosa to come in to reinforce the defense. But of course, with the relationship right now with Barcelona and Chelsea, it is a very, very delicate situation. Of course, Barcelona wanted both Aspen Aquetta and Marcus Alonso, but right now the club do prioritize Aspen Aquetta. If they don't get Marcus Alonso, they won't mind it, but they really do want Aspen Aquetta, and also the player himself wants to move. Both Aspen Aquetta and Barcelona are confident the deal will happen, but there is two big something blocks around the operation, and that is Chelsea, and more importantly, Thomas Tuchel as well. And finally, we do have a big update on the future of both Frankie de Jong and Memphis Depay, who both met with Chappy after the Classico in Las Vegas to discuss their futures. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 300 likes this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Let's start off with the transfer news. Over the past 24 hours, so the first player that we have been linked with is, of course, the number one target and priority signing for Barcelona in the summer transfer window at the moment, Jules Kunde. As you all know, Gerard Romero on Friday dropped the big bomb that Jules Kunde to Barcelona. Was on Saturday? Saturday that Jules Kunde to Barcelona is a done deal. He said it would be completed in the next couple of days. It could be official at any, any given moment. And now the whole entire media is backtracking. It's a Rafinha 2.0. Sport have come out saying that Barcelona and Sevilla have reached an agreement for Jules Kunde for 50 million euros fixed plus 10 million euros in variables. There is an agreement with the player as well. He will sign a four-year contract. Talking with Xavi convinced Kunde who rejected Chelsea's offer. Barcelona want to complete the transfer this coming week. Keep in mind that Chelsea bid 65 million euros for Kunde to Sevilla and now Barcelona going to be getting him for 60 million euros as a total package which of course is 5 million euros less than Chelsea's bid again Rafinha 2.0. Mundo Deportivo came out saying the sign of Jules Kunde by Barcelona is one step away. He did not play versus Boeing uh, Lisbon in their preseason friendly and is awaiting the final agreement. The deal could be officially announced between tomorrow and Tuesday, but there are key hours ahead. Finally, Fabrizio Romano came out saying that Barcelona have received indications from Jules Kunde's camp in the last hour. The player will be prepared to accept personal terms. Xavi also did call him. Chelsea have received no green light from Kunde or Sevilla after submitting their bids. Look, at the end of the day, Gerard Romero is going to be right. I don't know how he does it. This guy comes out saying the deal is done, then it always comes out happening every single time. Credit to him. As you can see, now the whole entire media is backtracking. Same thing happened with the likes of Matt Law. There's other reporters from uh, the Chelsea side, Ben Jacobs. Nothing from David Ornstein's side, even though he comes out when it's not really his forte. Comes out last second and says, oh, it's a done deal. Kind of like a Romano, here we go. We're still waiting on that. Here we go. Once we do get that, I will make that big video saying that Jules could that Barcelona is done. I don't know why though, but I'm more excited about Jules Kunde than I was about Lewandowski and Rafinha. It's because it's just a player that we desperately needed in the squad. If you ask me, I don't know if I should say this, but if you ask me to pick any player to sign that we've already signed from our targets, if we could only sign one of them, who would it be? I would have picked Kunde, even though Lewandowski would have brought you in more money, sure, sales, all that sort of stuff. I think freaking bird just flew, you know, all that sort of stuff, but. I'm just so freaking excited about this signing. It's a player that we needed. If we did not get him, the alternatives, the backup options were absolutely dog crap. So I'm so excited this is going to get over the line again. According to Jordan Romero, who of course number one source in Barcelona, he's saying this deal could be official at any given moment. I don't think it'll be official before we get a here we go or from a tweet from David Ornstein. I cannot see that happening. I haven't seen a transfer happen like that since... 
2017, 2016, like it's it's out of the ordinary, especially with a big deal like this. Probably one of the biggest sagas of the transfer window. So we'll wait and see on Jules Conde, but again, he is getting closer and closer and closer to Barcelona. Now, one of the players who was a backup option for Jules Kunde, if that opportunity did not happen, was of course Indigo Martinez. A few days ago, we got the big bomb in the media saying that, oh, Barcelona going for him. We contacted him, talking with his agent, talking to the president Athletic Bilbao, but of course now that is no longer the reality. It was a smoke screen from Mateo Aleman, masterclass from him, but the option of Indigo Martinez still could be happening as a free agent next summer. Gerard de Mayo came out saying that Indigo Martinez could arrive at Barcelona in 2023 as a free agent. This was the club's initial idea. Now, do we really need five center bats at the club? Because you think about it, Jules Kunde, Arujo, Eric Garcia, Kirchensen, that should be four enough cover there. Of course, you can look at it saying that Arujo and Kunde could play out right back as well, bring an actual natural center back. For me, if we sign him, okay, free agent, no risk. If you don't sign him, I'm okay with it either. I think the club are looking at him as, you know, a PK substitute because PK, of course, most likely will be retiring at the end of the season or just leaving the club in general. I have no idea what he'll do. And then Enrico Martinez comes in as a free agent to replace him. I wouldn't mind that. If Chappie really wants five center backs, go for it. But other than that, I don't really care anymore, to be honest. I think Enrico Martinez is a good center back. Is he worth 60 million? That's like Bill Bell wanted. Absolutely not. I think he's worth 20 million euros, especially being as a free agent next summer. So we'll wait and see if we sign him or not, because again, it still will be difficult because Athletic Bilbao do not want to let him go. Mark of Kamal saying that renewing Indigo Martinez is one of the Athletic Club's priorities. The player in the club will have a meeting in the next few days to clarify his future. So again, still not set in stone that he'll be a free agent, but if he is, I think Barcelona will definitely be in the race to sign him as a free agent. But again, Athletic Bilbao are prioritizing his renewal. As we all know, the new manager that's with Valverde absolutely loves the player. So always hitting Nico Martinez, but again, most likely if he does come to Barcelona, it will be as a free agent next summer. Now, along with a center back, the club are also looking at new fullbacks this summer to reinforce the fence starting on the right-hand side with the priority being Cesar Aspilicueta because Xavi wanted him since January. Personal terms were agreed back in the January transfer window, and yet Aspilicueta is still not a Barcelona player because of course, we're right now with Chelsea and Barcelona is not too great whatsoever. But Gerard Romero has come out saying that Aspilicueta's operation is still alive despite the tension between Barcelona and Chelsea this summer. The player believes that he'll be able to arrive. Xavi has been key. The fee will be around 4 million euros fixed plus 2 million euros in variables. So overall, 6 million euros for Aspilicueta, not too bad. But of course, as a free agent, he would have been a way, way better signing. Again, Ramirez come out saying the operation to sign Aspen Aquata is still much alive. Xavi and the player are in daily contact and continue to believe that he will end up at Barcelona at one point during the summer transfer window. I think we will sign one of Aspen Aquata in the loss right now. If we do sign Jose Kunde, of course, we will. I think we'll only get one. And I think definitely, like I've been saying to you guys for months and months and months, Aspen Aquata is a priority out of the two. If Xavi can pick one, he's picking Aspen Aquata every single day of the week and we have it being rumored to be linked with even more left backs we will talk about of course in the next few seconds i think as we the signing would be a good signing is it needed would i be you know concerned if we don't sign him no he's 32 years old i think his leadership his versatility in the squad could be very key to make us you know one of the top teams in europe but if you look at it you have des as a natural right back you have roberto can play there kunde can play there Arujo can play there as well but i see kunde and Arujo as our two center backs partnership if you want to go you say Classico, you want to put Aruha at the right back to you know, lock down Vinicius, you can play Kunde and Christensen, that's fine, or Kunde Eric Garcia. But for me, that shouldn't be on a regular basis. I think having a natural right back or two natural right backs in the squad is very, very important to compete throughout the whole entire season. You can have tactical changes here and there, but it cannot be set in stone that Aruha and Kunde play right back throughout the whole entire season. So I do believe we need a right back. I think Asmako is a great player there. Chavi wants him as well. But again, the operation will be difficult, but it's still very much possible. Now, with the relationship between Barcelona and Chelsea, at an all-time low, it is very, very unlikely we'll be getting Marcus Alonso and Aspen Laqueta. So the club now are looking at alternative backup options in the left-back position since Marcus Alonso is not the priority. It is Aspen Laqueta. And Gerard Romero has come out saying that Chao Enrique and Sergio Reguillon are off for Barcelona if Marcus Alonso does not arrive. Now, a couple of things. One, Christian Folk, as you all probably know, he's one of the top journalists around Bayern Munich. He does well in the Bundesliga here and there, but around Bayern Munich, he's easily top two. 
He's come out saying that Marcus Alonso to Barcelona is on the verge of completion. Take that as you will. I'm not going to include in the video because I think in terms of Barcelona news himself, he's absolutely shite. If, we, if that happens, credit to him. But if I don't think it'll happen. Now, he's saying it's going to be happening in the next couple days. Once just to end their US tour, he'll go to Barcelona and sign. He's saying it's on the verge of completion. I don't believe that. We got two backup options here. We got Chao Enrique and Sergio Reguilón. Chao Enrique, interesting option. He'll be a bit expensive, around 20 million euros. That's his valuation right now. Barcelona may be, may be able to get him for cheaper. And of course, keep in mind, Deco is his agent. This could be a favorite from Barcelona to Deco for signing us Rafinha, of course. Sergio Reguilón, Spanish, typical left back. He's decent, but. He's the Madridista. He's a former Real player. I saw him play in the Clasico, trying to fight Arturo Vidal back in 2018, 2019. I don't want to see him in a Barcelona shirt. Is he decent? Yes. If he, if he did not play for Real Madrid, would I go for him? Possibly, but I'm not a fan of bringing in Real Madrid players who play for the first team. Of course, Marco Alonso came from their B team. He came from their academy, but never played for the first team. So I'm okay. I'm like content with that. I'm not over the moon with it, but I'll take it. Reguillon played for the first team multiple, multiple times. I'm not a big fan of bringing him in. Out of the two, I would definitely go with Chao Enrique. And I think Chao Enrique fits the profile of Marcus Alonso much, much better because he is a left wing back, so it's Alonso. Reguillon is more so of a natural full back. So I'll wait and see. But I think we're spending 20 million euros on Chao Enrique, let's say for a whole entire package, 15 million euros plus five in variables. I'd rather go for Carmaldo for 15. I'd rather go for Javi Galan for 18. I mean, there's better options out there for that evaluation, in my opinion. I think Barcelona are going to go for Ch uh, Chao Enrique just as a favor for Deco for bringing in Rafinha. Again, the name of Chao Enrique is getting a lot of momentum in the Barcelona media. I think A has come out saying it as well. Mourinho Botima mentioning it as well, but of course it originates from Gerard Romero. So, I keep your eyes on Chao Enrique. And of course, Reguilón on loan is still a decent option for Barcelona. But the decision, of course, is yet to be made if Alonso does not come in as the backup left back. Now, the biggest transfer rumor over the past 24 hours, in my opinion, any Anyways, has been the rumor of Leo Messi returning to Barcelona. This is coming in from Sport. Keep in mind, Sport. They're a Catalan news outlet. They're close to the club, of course, in terms of actually close. Like, they're here and the club is here. That kind of close, but they tend to get stuff all over the place wrong. Like, ah. take it with a pinch of salt. That's all I'll say. They came out saying that Xavi has asked the board to re sign Leo Messi when his contract expires in PSG in 2023. The coach said that his signing can be key to revival of the club <laughs> I don't know man I don't know of course I bring Messi back I think bring him back for a year give him a good farewell one last run in the team 100% I'd do it and I think if you think this is how it, when I when this report first came out this was going through my head Busquets and PK are leaving they're both currently sat on around 200,000 euros per week based on deferred salaries uh, you know, deferred payments, all that sort of stuff, right? If you combine it all together, the money we owe them, it's around 200, 300,000 euros per week. They're both going to be leaving at the end of the season. So if you take their money, combine it, give it to Messi, I think that's possible. Does Messi still want his, you know, 1 million per week or 500,000 euros per week? I'm not quite too sure. Will Chavi be able to convince him? I think it looks like now Chavi can convince any single player in the world. I mean, I have no idea, but. I think the rumors will be, I think the rumors will start see this flat in my face. I think the rumors will start to intensify once January hits. I think after the World Cup, whether Messi wins it or loses it, I think then the rumors will intensify because of course by January he's he's uh, legally allowed to speak to any single club outside of league. Uh, apparently PSG have already talked to him about extending his contract until 2024. Keep in mind that option, Messi and PSG have to agree with it, not just PSG or not just Leo Messi. So I think you have to wait till January. Once January hits, once Messi's, uh, you know, last World Cup run is comes to an end, whether he wins it, quarterfinal, semifinal, round 16, or even group stages, I think then the decision will be made. I'll say this, I think if PSG win the Champions League, I think he will stay, try to defend it, of course. I think he will extend that contract for one year, maybe come to Barcelona in 2020, uh, 2020, uh, 2024. That could be possible, but we we'll wait and see. I think it's too early, too good, delicate of a situation. I think sport just coming out right now, just to maybe sell newspapers or whatever. I think it's too, too early. But keep in mind what I said. Bruce gets a PK leaving their wages. Give it to Leo Messi. It's definitely possible in terms of, of course, registration of, you know, a free agent in La Liga with FFP. So I'll wait and see. But I think if there's one manager in the world that convinced Messi to come back, it is Chabi. But also the relationship between John Laporta and Messi right now is at an all time low. Laporta came out in an interview a few days ago saying that Messi's, uh, Messi's uh, journey and story at Barcelona is not over yet. He's either going to get a farewell or come back. Oh, well, he didn't say this, but he's pretty much. Uh, 
hinted at the fact he'll get a farewell or maybe come back as a player, sporting director, somewhere in the club, which of course Messi hinted at a few years ago as well. Messi's gonna come back with Barcelona at some point. The question now is, how will he come back? Upstairs in the boardroom or downstairs as a player on the pitch? Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. First off, of course, on the Deadwood list, who did not go on preseason tour, who the club are desperate to get rid of. Oscar Minguez and Gabriel Sanz when the Portivo came out saying that Celta Vigo and AK Athens are the clubs who are most advanced negotiations for Oscar Minguez. Although there's still a major economic difference, his wages are not a problem, but his price set at the club needs to be negotiated. Apparently, no club that want Oscar Minguez want to pay that 5 million euro price tag that Barcelona have set. Am I disappointed? Yes. I think Osman Guetta is definitely worth 5 million euros, but of course, keep in mind his contract does end in 2023, so we either sell him now for some money or he goes later as a free agent. I cannot see the club let him go. Well, I think the club could let him go for free, but if they do, they put in buyback option, right for first refusal, all that sort of stuff in there, but the club do want money. I mean, is it really worth it holding on to Minguez until the end of the window just to get one or two million euros for him? Let's be honest, I'm not quite too sure. This for me is a very difficult situation. What do you do? We have a player that's worth five million euros, no club that wants him want to pay it. You let him go for free, chuck in all those options, or do you want to take some money that you can get? I'm not quite too sure. We could see maybe like a one million euro transfer fee plus four million euros in variables. We could end up seeing that, but I think Osman Gita will leave. I'm, I'm very, very confident that he will leave at some point. He has great ambition to leave and play and become a, you know, professional footballer playing week in, week out. For me, the question now is how will he leave? Will he leave with some money coming into the Barcelona bank or a bank staying completely empty for his transfer? I'm not quite too sure, but we'll wait and see. I think right now with the preseason getting to the halfway mark, players are going to be returning back to training in Barcelona. I think he will start to intensify, intensify should I say, his exit. But it won't be easy with the price uh, by Barcelona apparently is set too high. I think 5 million euros, man, it's not too bad for Mingueta. We sold Jukla, who was a B player for 5 million euros, although he is a striker. Strikers this summer have been in more demand, should I say. But I think Mingueta, he's of course, he's kind of like, in my opinion, an aspect of Quetta in the making in the sense that he can play anywhere along that back four, center back, right back, and left back, in my opinion. Center back is the best position, right back can do a job there, left back. Worst case scenario, just to fill in some injuries or suspension crisis, but a way to see him in Gaeta, but again, it looks like he will be leaving Barcelona. Again, the question is, how will he leave Barcelona with money coming into Barcelona or leaving most likely as a free agent, maybe as a letter of freedom? That situation right now is still undecided. Now, in my opinion, the player on that Deadwood list of, you know, Neto, Mingueta, Omtiti, Reiki, Push, Martin Breithe, who is the closest to leaving at the moment, is Neto De Marzio, who of course is one of the top journalists in the world. He's come out saying that Napoli have contacted Neto and the talks are concrete. Also, Premier League club Fulham are also interested in signing Neto and arriving Napoli to sign him. Most likely, it will be a letter of freedom slash contract termination for Neto. It looks like we'll not get any transfer fee for him, but to be honest, just getting rid of his wages will be important again keep in mind he has one year left on his contract he's gonna be i think owed 12 what is it like 6 million euros from now until his contract expires so we'll see what the club do they gave him 1 million let him go for free 2 million you can go i don't know maybe nothing and you can go right now as a free agent I think that I think that situation still needs to be found out, but now Neto, of course, he rejected the Celta Vigo option. This option now has come up with Napoli and now Fulham. I think he'd do well in either of either the clubs, but of course, keep in mind at Napoli, he'll be a backup choice that could be difficult, to, you know, operation to fulfill. Fulham, he could be first, uh, first, uh, first goalkeeper choice. We'll wait and see, but I think, of course, with his agents being in Miami, talking with Mateo and Iman, Jordi Cruyff, having that meeting, I think that meeting was all about Neto. Maybe they talked about other stuff like. Martinez or Coutinho, something like that. But I think the main topic of that meeting was Neto's departure. I think right now his departure is the closest at the Deadwood players. He's got to leave, of course, and Naki Pena will come in as the backup option. If not on uh, Naki Pena, it will be on Tenez. I think getting rid of Neto is very, very important. And it finally, finally, finally as well. He should have went last summer, but last summer he decided to stay in the club. We're not really in situation to let him go. But now we have the money, we have the options. He can leave now this summer with Fulham and Napoli being in concrete talks with him as a possible free agent signing. Let's hope this happens in the next couple of days. This also could be the departure that we need to bring in Jules Kunde as well to the club. we we'll are be hearing the draw the mirrors saying, look, the club can sign him, but to register him, we do need one or two departures. This, 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 this departure can be very, very important. Of course, currently sat on 120,000 euros per week. Could open up that wage cap space. Of course, we will go Mingueta. He's on like, what, 
30,000 a week so already get pushed on like what 60 so that won't be that much but 120,000 years a week open that up could be very very important so i have to wait and see but again netto in concrete talks with napoli and fulham for his barcelona exit this summer now the final topic that i want to discuss before i end off this video is give you guys two big future updates on the two players who the club want to sell this summer and who will also generate the most revenue in their sales frankie de jong and Memphis Depay. Apparently, after the Classico, there's supposed to be a meeting between Frankie de Jong and Chavi, and also Memphis Depay and Chavi to resolve their futures. And the meeting between Frankie de Jong and Chavi is pretty much confirmed right now, but with Memphis, it's still unknown. We let's talk about Frankie de Jong first. This is coming in from Javier Miguel from AES. Keep in mind, Javier Miguel is very, very close to Chavi. He's come out saying that Chavi has asked Frankie de Jong to take a 50% pay cut. Both left the meeting satisfied. Everything indicates that the Dutchman is receptive to making an economic effort to staying at the club. So after the Classico, after he played center back for that second half, he had a meeting with Chavi and Chavi said, look, I want to keep you, but in order to keep you, you have to take a 50% wage cut. If you take that wage cut, you'll be a starting player for me. You'll play in that midfield alongside Buscus and Pedri like you have over the past few seasons. We'll win trophies, yada, yada, yada. It's now in your hands. If you do not though, I will give the green light for your departure because Bernard Silva is at Man City just waiting for us. So the ball's now in Frankie's court. I think I think the situation right now is still very delicate. I think I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just it keeps changing. One minute he's going, one minute he's not. I mean, I just need a freaking break from this man. I have no idea. I have no idea. I think no one can predict this right now. I think Gerard De Miro even came out a few days ago saying that Frankie Dion's departure is now complicated, even though he came out in May say 95% he's going to join Manchester United. <sighs> if he takes the pay cut, of course, he'll stay 100%. And then, of course, he won't sign for uh, Bernardo Silva. But I tweeted this last night. I kind of want Frankie to leave because we can sign Bernardo Silva and make this, you know, the best transfer window ever just, just because of that. But I'll be happy with either one. Again, I've been seeing you guys for a month, either Frankie De Jong or Bernardo Silva. One of them has to be in my midfield for next season. I think it's all, of course, that depends on that, that decision is all in the hands of Frankie De Jong. He takes a pay cut, he'll stay. If he does not take the pay cut, he'll leave and Bernardo Silva will come in. So, a way to see on Frankie. I think right now he's now considering that 50% pay cut, which the club have been handing out for the past few uh, months now. So... Let's see, again, he's not worth 400,000 euros per week. Let's be honest, I think, you know, a quarter of a million uh, a week is definitely fair for him. But of course, with the situation that we're currently in, 200,000 euros per week, I think, is a very, very fair price for him. You can throw in some variables in there to bring that to a quarter million euros per week if you want to. But 400,000 is just too much. Shout out, Bartomeo, you absolute twat. Now, on Memphis Depay, having Miguel came out saying that Xavi has been declared to Memphis Depay that he has to leave Barcelona. The club will listen to offers for around 20 million euros for him. So... Apparently that meeting did happen, and Javi told him, look, you have no place in the squad. You got Lewandowski, Aubameyang, Rafinha, Dembele, Ferran, Ansu Fati, and also Alex Collado. I would much prefer Collado on the wing than Memphis Depay. Currently, I think in that Xavi system, it fits Collado much, much better. We're hearing right now that Memphis is open to leaving, but he wants to leave with the letter of freedom. He came as a free agent, and he wants to leave as a free agent, but the club are saying, look, we need some money for you, like... I think the club, keep in mind that Juan Laporta is very, 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 very grateful for the players who came in when the club had no money, i.e. Eric Garcia, Aguero, Mamis Depay, Ferran Torres, Aubameyang, those players who came in when the club was at the all-time low, Laporta is grateful for him, for them. I think Laporta would do it, but he want, I think he wants to talk to him and say, look, just give us some money, we'll sell you on the cheap. The, the club, if Jaime Miguel saying 20 million euros, I doubt that. I think... We'll get maybe 10 plus 5 for him. I, we're hearing right, The only team that we're hearing right now that he wants to go to that has some interest is Manchester United. We're hearing that Tottenham and Newcastle do want him as well, but he's not really keen going, on going there. I think going to um, Man United with possibly Ronaldo leaving and him being the striker well, alongside Anthony Martial would be a great move for Memphis as well. Again, 100 million euros Manchester United give us for both Frankie and Memphis. I'll take that every single day of the week, but we'll wait and see. We're hearing right now again that Memphis wants to leave as a free agent, and he'll only leave as a free agent, but the club do want at least a little bit of a transfer fee. Now, Gabriel Sanz from the Deportivo came out saying that Memphis Depay has many proposals on the table, especially, of course, from the Premier League, but he resists this all proposal. The club are evaluating a transfer for the Dutchman with Manchester United, one of the clubs interested. 
Again, I think if he's leaving, he's going to the Premier League. He ain't going anywhere else. Serie A, I think Juventus, that option or you know, fell through. Bayern Munich, I think Bayern Munich move for him wouldn't be that bad. I think they remember they were interested in him in a few months ago when we were really, really in deep with Lewandowski early, early on. But we'll wait and see with Memphis. I think both these players, I think one of them, 100%, I'll bet a lot of money that 100%, one of them will leave. The question now is who? I think most likely it will be Memphis over Frankie. He takes that pay cut, he'll stay. But with Memphis, he can take as many pay cuts as he wants. He's just not going to be able to fit in the squad. The squad now is too big, it's too powerful. I would thank Memphis for his services. Of course, he came in, he had a lot of search sales in that first season. He came in, carried the club for the first few months, especially with the injuries on the wings as well. But this is the reality. This is what has that big clubs like Barcelona. One minute you're the star, one minute you're the outcast. So we'll see on both players. I think in the end, again, one of them will leave 100%. Both of them could end up leaving. And to be honest, both also could end up staying. The situation right now is very, very delicate. Again, both players met with Chavi, but we'll see what John Laporta and Matteo Edemond decide over the next couple days. So that was my reaction to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing on the first day, of course, is the possible return of Leo Messi in 2023. What do you think will happen? He'll come, he will maybe wait till 2024, he won't come back at all, he'll come back upstairs. What do you think will happen with Messi's situation in the next year or so? Secondly, on Jules Kunde, almost pretty much on the verge of a deal completion for him. How excited are you about his signing? Think his signing is more important than the Rafinha and Lewandowski. Thirdly, on Aspen Quote, I think that operation will happen or not. And finally, of course, on the future of Frankie de Jong and Memphis Depay. What do you think will happen? One will stay, both will stay, or both will leave. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and force a Barca. Oh, my God.